When I'm saltwater fly fishing for tarpon, I like to use a nine foot rod. This is a 12 weight rod. The reason I'm using a 12 weight is not so much that a 10 weight wouldn't be just as good, but we may get that really big tarpon and I may need that 12 weight. Plus the fact we got a little bit of wind out here today and it's a little easier to cast the fly into the wind with this 12 weight. Using a number four able, very good reel for tarpon fishing, I'm using a number 12 line it's usually the first cast that counts. Now I like this fly line under the water, lets the fly sink much faster, gets down to the tarpon level quicker. And that's what I want. I want this fly just a little above the tarpon or right at his level where he can see it easily and not have to move very far. That's about all there is to it. Okay, let's tie a grizzly deceiver. This is a takeoff on Lefty's deceiver. Probably the best all around streamer pattern that we can use in salt water. We'll tie this fly on a TMC 800S. You can tie this with or without weed guard according to where you're going to be fishing it. Use silver crystal flash, pearl crystal flash, silver mylar, either in a 10 or 12. On a smaller fly, I'll use white calf tail. On larger flies, I'll use bucktail. The calf tail sinks much better and much faster and has a better translucency. If I could get it two or three inches, that's probably all I'd use. We'll use a grizzly capon, peacock hurl, and black six aught thread. This way I can use a few more thread wraps, make a stronger fly without a lot of thread buildup. Okay, let's put a jam knot right behind the eye of the hook. We'll wrap back, cut off our tag in, and wrap back to the bend of the hook, laying a nice thread base, and we'll come back forward to about an eye length behind the eye of the hook. We'll select four grizzly hackles. I've already got a few of them prepared. Let me show you how we prepare them. We'll hold them up here. We want them almost three times the hook shank length. We want at least one and a half to two times the hook length behind the bend of the hook. So we'll just hold it up there, measure it, hold it with our left hand. Come right here where our thread is and clip it off. Now we're going to strip the barbs all the way back to the bend of the hook, so we'll mark that with your finger all of your left hand, and come right in here and strip these off. Now remember one thing, we want to use, leave a few of these barbules on the stem where we can overwrap those where our feathers won't twist when we wrap them down with thread. Okay, now you can tie these feathers on where the curvature of the feather is outer in, dry, they'll probably look neater if they go in. But to fish them, I like them where the curve's out because it gives more action to the fly. So that's the way we're going to tie them on here. Come in here, if they're not perfect, cut them off right where that thread wrap is. And we'll just bind our butts or our cut-in area down what you really want to do is be sure that you hold those feathers all up and they're tied in right on top of the hook shank. And we'll tie right over these barbules right back to our thread base. Okay, wrap our thread back to our original tie-in area. And we'll just grab all four feathers, lift up, and just wiggle them a little bit. and we'll grab two on each side, pull them out and down, out and down. And that way we'll get a nice splay. Take a few fibers of pearl crystal flash, three or four, 
and the same amount of silver. Don't want to overdo the flash. Pull them all in here together. Again, we'll wrap them around the thread. Bring it up, put a wrap in front of it. Now we'll hold it in a V on each side of the hook shank. Tie it back to our rear tie-in area. And come forward to our original tie-in point. Pull all of them together. And we'll cut them off about two-thirds the length of the tail feathers. And just pull them on each side. They should just go down there almost automatically. Okay. We'll tie in our mylar tinsel. And tie it in where the silver side's out. And again, I like to leave a little tag in because I'll cut it off all at the same time. Put two or three wraps right in front. Hold it about a, I guess that's about a 45 degree angle. And if you get a little bulge up there, just support the tag in. And put a little pressure on it and straighten it out. Now there's a little trick to this. You want each side to lay right by each other. So you overwrap it and just pull it till it slips off. As such. And it's okay if you have a teeny bit of gap. Much better to have a little bit of gap than it is to uh, overlap it and get a lumpy body. There we go, right around the back. Okay, and now we'll just come forward. Now, a lot of tires I know at this point, after they trim the crystal flash, will do one of two things. They'll put a nice, shiny, hard coat on here, or they'll epoxy it, one of the two. Let them dry and then proceed with finishing the fly. We'll unwrap our first tinsel and come back here and capture. There's no use. There's no use leaving those first wraps on there because it's going to be tied down with the, the tinsel anyway. Get that thread out of the way so we don't cut it. Come in here and make a nice close cut and over wrap it a little bit. Now again, you can coat this body with either epoxy, which absolutely makes an indestructible fly, or can you can use a product that's got a real nice shiny hard finish called Bug Glaze. And we'll come back to the rear portion of where we're going to put our head. And on this fly, it's a small fly. This is a number two. So we'll cut some calf tail and clean out all the trash in the under fur. Okay, even at the tips. Okay, and divide the calf tail in half. We'll put half on the bottom, half on the top. And we'll hold it up here and measure it. I want it just about one third the feather length. And so we'll put a couple of wraps on here. And maybe more, maybe four or five. And again, we'll wiggle it. Use that technique. Wiggle the butt and the tip portion. Come in here with the scissors and cut it off at an angle. Okay, you can tie it off conventionally as a beard. Or I'm going to rotate my vise around. And I'm going to lay this on the bottom. And it's going to be about the same length. And again, just take that and wiggle it. Pull up the butts 
and cut it off at an angle. Let me get my fine scissors and trim up this angle just a little bit. Okay, we'll overwrap it going down. Put a drop of flex cement on the tie-in area, top and bottom. Okay, now again, we got a little hump here. So we're gonna go back with our taper, go back to the hump and come back down toward the eye. Go up to the hump, and come back toward, down toward the eye. And just build up that area till you got a smooth transition from thread to the calf tail. We're gonna tie in Oh, uh, six to eight peacock curls. Clip those off the stem. And again, I use my stacker for this. I'll just put them in. Even up the points. I didn't get them even as I want to. Let me do that again. Okay, now just grab the tips and just kind of shake it. And usually you can get them where they all curve down to the right area. And we'll want, I want this just a little bit longer than my calf tail. And I'll tie that in with a loose loop and then a couple of wraps. And here again, I'll grab the butts and I'll wiggle it to be sure it's right on top. Cut it off where we got a little section of peacock to tie down on. Okay, now we'll select two more feathers. And we'll select them a little farther up the neck. Where they'll be just a little bit slimmer. And we'll put the tips together and we're going to measure them both at one time. And again, we'll just lay them right in on the side. And I want those where they'll go back about one half to two thirds the original feather. And I'll hold them up to the side of the hook shank, come in here right behind the eye and clip them both off at one time. And get rid of the excess barbs. Clean the fly up a little bit. And I'll lay one on each side of the body. And we'll tie it in and tie it back to our original tie-in area and then adjust it. Now we've got the curved side out on this also and then on the far side too. Right, forward uh, look at it. Let me adjust that a little bit where it lays like I want it to. And make a nice tapered head out of thread. Be sure that peacock's covered. Now for the eyes, there's quite a few things you can use. You can paint the eyes with lacquer or enamel. There's some new stick-on eyes that you can use. Or if you're in a hurry to fish it like I am, we may fish it just like it is. Just putting some cement on the eye and getting out there and catching a fish with it. Do a whip finish. Preen it just a little bit. Let me grab my tweezers. 
Got a couple of barbels, barbules that just went crazy right here. And just pick them out. Neat thing about fly tying is you don't have to get it right the first time. If you don't like it, you can do it over again. But I like this one, and I know the fish are going to. So let's go fish it. <laughs> 